The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Paul Lucas as Pastor Martin Niemöller of Berlin. In an original radio play, listen for the sound of wings. Church bells ring in America. The holiest days of two of the world's great religions are with us again. But this year, across Europe, the bells are silent, and people fear even to pray. Tonight, with Paul Lucas as our star, Cavalcade reaches across the sea for its hero, bringing you a story of a fighter for the religious freedom that our American bells proclaim. In a concentration camp in central Germany, Pastor Martin Niemöller of Berlin suffers for his faith behind bars his very torment, the measure of our religious liberty. Starring Paul Lucas as Pastor Martin Niemöller of Berlin in Listen for the Sound of Wings, written by Arthur Miller on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Sunday morning in America and the people come from their houses walking with holiday ease toward churches they've chosen, so sure that no man will ever dare to block their way, so sure and safe. Helen, I think Larry's grown since the Navy shown him how to stand so straight. Oh, it's just this uniform, Mrs. Nelson. Makes my neck look longer, that's all. <laughs> but you are straighter, I think, Larry, and your face is so brown. Say, here come the Murphys from Mass. Oh, we must be early for a change. Well, it's no harm being early. No, just that the minister will be surprised to see us get in before the collection. <laughs> morning, Mrs. Murphy. Oh, morning. <laughs> morning. I'll get that oh, morning, cup of sugar Murphy. back to you tomorrow. Oh, no hurry. My family ain't much for sweets. Oh, I needed it for some wonderful rhubarb I got at Goldberg's. I'll send some over with the sugar. Oh, that'll be so kind of you. Is this Larry Jameson? Say, I guess I must look bigger in this uniform. Nobody seems to be sure it's me. And the windows smashed. I am sure it never crossed your minds that a day might come when you would arrive here to find the door of this church padlocked or its walls blackened by fire. I am sure you do not realize that your sons are fighting the battles of this war to prevent men from locking you out of this church. And yet that is one of the reasons we fight this war. I will not deliver a sermon today. Instead, I will tell you a strange and terrible story. It is the story of Martin Niemöller, a pastor of the Lutheran Church in Berlin. It is the year 1933, the day before Germany's last election. Adolf Hitler and his lieutenants are sitting in their Berlin office. They are quiet. They are waiting for a visitor. Yes, he's always prompt. Ah, there he is, coming into the building. Himmler, stay in the next room. I want you here, Rudloff, Rosenberg, you, Goering, Gabriels, and Hess. Now, understand this. If we can get Martin Niemöller on our side, we have the Christian vote in Germany. When he enters, we will all rise and salute him, according to his rank as former U-boat commander. Remember, Rosenberg, this is no parson. Niemöller is made of iron. He insults very quickly, they say. So we will all be Christians this afternoon. Pay him every respect, even above me. He must endorse the party for tomorrow's elections. His voice carries into every church in Germany. Pastor Martin Niemöller to see Herr Hitler. Show him in. On your feet now. Herr Commander Niemöller, welcome. At your ease, meine Herren. I have been out of the Navy for 20 years. You mustn't salute me. Uh, it was automatic, Herr Pastor. A man looks at you and wants to salute. I am flattered, Herr Hitler. But I've come for other re business. Uh, good. Have a chair, please. Between soldiers, there is no need for small talk, Herr Pastor. You understand, of course, that Germany is at the 11th hour. That I understand, Herr Hitler. But something else I do not understand. I am at your service, Herr Pastor. When your Nazi party began its propaganda, we of the church understood that you were trying to change Germany back to what she was before 1918. Exactly, Herr Niemöller. Now, let me go on. A German Kaiser again. Order again. 
and the church once more a powerful force in Germany. The church, you understand, is on its last legs here. Our funds are going fast. We have no support from the state. Her pastor in Germany, once we are in power, the priest and the minister will stand beside the government again. Not like an orphan left to pick crumbs in the streets. First and foremost, a Nazi is a Christian, her pastor. Good. That is good. But tell me then, why do you make propaganda against the church? Oh, simple, her pastor. Facts are facts. Millions of Germans are atheists. We cannot come to them preaching religion. So we preach atheism to the atheists. They support us, and once we take power, we hand them over to the churches, and they are yours to convert. We are realists. A Nazi does not live in the clouds. Then you are lying to the atheists. To the atheists? Yes, we are lying. But to me? To you, I am telling the truth. We are all religiously inclined. The atheism we preach sometimes is purely a tactic. Well... I'm trying very hard to believe that, Herr Hitler. Realism, Herr Pastor. Realism. We will bring the heathen back to the church, and if we must lie to do it, then lie we must. Otherwise, it's chaos. Yes, it is chaos. But a lie is a lie, and the man who tells it is a liar. And I cannot go with liars. But if a man lies in order to bring a great good, is there not some honor in it? And... Could he not be a good man, after all? But your stormtroops, they have beaten people. I've heard they murdered Ah, them. this is propaganda from the Bolsheviks. This is not true. It is true, Herr Hitler. And I will guarantee the support of the evangelical church only if you swear to me that no violence will be used to influence the elections tomorrow. And no violence once you are in power. Herr Niemöller, I give you my oath as a soldier. So far as I am able to prevent it, there will be no violence on the part of my Nazis. Soldier's oath, I will trust. Ah, then we may announce your support of our party at once. On that condition, you may do so. From this moment, Herr Niemöller, Germany moves toward Christ. For that I pray God, Herr Hitler. Niemöller, Herr Pastor. Frau Hessler, <laughs> come in. What are you doing up this time of night? My son... You're, They're after my son. Your son? He just called on the phone. He's coming here to the church. You must let him hide in the church. Hide? <laughs> Who is he hiding from? The stormtroopers. He was making a speech against Hitler and they broke into the meeting. What? He escaped. He's coming here. No, it must be something more than that, Frau Hessler. He must have done something, broken the law. Martin, my husband has been sexton of this church for 15 years. We did not raise a lawbreaker. The Nazis are beating up people all over Berlin tonight. The people are frightened to vote against them. No, 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 you are hysterical. They gave me the word there would be no violence. Look, man is coming across the street. It's Frank. It's Frank who let me open the church for no, him, but Martin. this is ridiculous. A man is not hunted for making a speech. A car parked across the street. Where? Martin, there's a man sitting in the car. The door is opening. Oh. Somebody's getting out. He's got a gun. Frank, look out! Martin, he's oh. out! Uh, here, I'll carry him into the house. Uh, Look at him. He's dead. Is he dead? Yes, he's dead, Frau Hessler. Oh. I have seen too many not to know. Now we lie him on the couch here. So. That's What is happening? They shot my son. He promised. I give you my oath as a soldier, he said. It must be. Yes, your son must have been mixed up in some shady business. No. There were Nazis in that car. They murdered a hundred tonight. They're making sure of the election. That's why they're killing. And he gave me his oath. A soldier's oath. Why? Why? Where are you going, Pastor Nimmer? To break a covenant I made with the murderer. To break it in his face. I cannot, I cannot understand you, Adolf. 
He preaches against you every Sunday. It is known, it is common knowledge. Do you want the country to think that the Nazi party is afraid of Niemöller? I am not afraid of Niemöller, Himmler. Then why is he free? The other priests who fought you, they are where they belong. We are not in power two days. This is three years now we have Germany. Give him to me, Adolf. He only needs to have his head twisted around. This parson... Himmler is right. It is right. Now listen to me, Himmler. All of you, listen. Jesus Christ has lived in the German mind for 15 centuries. They cannot wipe him out in one year. Christianity must be drawn out of Germany like slow heat draws infection from a wound. Nimmler that heat. The Christians will follow him. He must lead them to us. Slowly, he must bend the cross over his pulpit until it is a swastika. Then, only then, can we make away with Nimmler. But then they are praying to me. To kill him is to kill our last chance to capture Christianity in Germany. In short, you will play dictaphones in Nimmler's church. Recall his sermons and bring them to me. I must understand this man. He's very strange. I must win his soul. Herr Pastor, there is a gentleman to see you. Well, I must start services, Fräulein. I have no time for visitors on Sunday mornings. Herr Pastor, it is Herr von Rübentrop. Von Rübentrop? I thought he was in England. Show him in. I will only keep you a minute. Well, I never expected to see you so close to a church, Joachim. Uh, neither did I. But uh, as a matter of fact, I have come, Nimbala, to become again a member of your parish. Mm. This is a surprise. A Nazi, a confirmed pagan like yourself, suddenly turning to Christ. Tell me what happened to change your mind. Uh, couldn't we dispense with the explanations? I have come to join the church. This is not a drinking club, Joachim. A certain degree of sincerity is required. Explanations are in perfect order. Very well, then. I am, as you know, ambassador to England. And on Sundays, the other ambassadors all go to their respective churches. It is a disadvantage not to be affiliated with some religious order. In short, it is a matter of state. And you, uh, I should say Hitler, expects me to accept you on this basis. A raving atheists, like yourself. It uh, will be to your advantage. I might say it is required. I should say it is required, Herr von Riebentrop. Last night, all the churches in Lübeck were closed down. It is forbidden to preach the Christian gospel in Lübeck. Your thugs are hunting down the clergy there like dogs. And today, I am to admit you, a member of the government, into my church. I didn't come to talk. Indeed not. You came to get the stamp of my approval upon the Nazi regime. Very well. Go back to Hitler and tell him that so long as I have a tongue in my head, I will damn him and all his works. Every cell in my body works day and night for his destruction. You uh, don't seem to understand, Herr Niemöller. This is your last chance to escape arrest in prison. And perhaps worse. For what crime? For treason. Recordings of your last eight sermons are now being played back in Herr Hitler's office. There have been hidden microphones in your church I for... know that. I knew it the first day they put them there. Give my sentiments to Hitler and tell him that if he has a Christian in his ranks, he may send him to join my church. But since he has none, I will admit no Nazis to membership. Good day, my Herr. I have a sermon to deliver. Do not deliver it, Herr Pastor. I beg your pardon. It will be your last. Five Gestapo men are seated in your church. They have orders to make the arrest if you criticize the state again. Then it truly is the end, huh? Not if you come to your senses. Herr von Riebentrop, I came to my senses too late. Stand aside. Don't deliver that sermon, Herr Niemelow. You did not really believe I would surrender my guard without a fight, did you? You are preparing for a battle with me, are you not? Yes. Well, I then let it begin. Are. There is no battle I would rather fight than for the right to preach God's word as I see it. Mark me, Nazi. My soul breeds fire today. Before Adolf Hitler or Lucifer himself, I will not bend. Stand aside. Good people, there is only one question now. 
If you want to become a beast without a soul, without a mind, you will obey him. But if you obey, obey him, you cannot be a Christian man. They're coming up the aisles. Five of them. Say no more. They'll put you away. Take your seat. Good people, I repeat my words. If you obey Adolf Hitler, if you obey him, you cannot be a Christian man. And take him. Yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah, Pastor. Uh, Pastor. Walk quickly out that door. Yeah, come. You are listening to Paul Lucas as Pastor Martin Niemöller of Berlin on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Ripped from his pulpit in the midst of his sermon, Niemöller is brought before Hitler. With the two men in the room is Rudloff, a special Gestapo agent. For almost five minutes, Hitler stands staring at a German man who will not bow to him. At last, he speaks. Why? Money? You do not want money. Our, I offer you the position as bishop of the new German church. I will build you a new cathedral, the glory of the world. I will make you great with honors. But Christ, Herr Hitler. Where is Christ in all this? In glory? Germany, there can only be one God. There is one God in Germany, and I serve him now. Why can't you understand this? You are a military man. Don't you see what we are trying to do? This time, Niemöller, we will conquer the world. We cannot do it with an army of Christians. A soldier cannot turn his other cheek. A soldier cannot feel that the meek will conquer, that he's a brother to his enemy. Germany must have her own religion. And you are her God? A man cannot serve two masters, Niemöller. It is myself or Jesus Christ. Come to me, Niemöller. Stand beside me. The world lies open like a treasure house before us. Shake my hand. Come, shake my hand. The hand is the hand of the Antichrist. I do not deny it. For Germany, Niemöller, for the mastery of the world. Take uh, my hand. Herr uh, Hitler, if I did not believe that you will die soon... I would strangle you this very minute. Niemöller! A new cathedral, is it? Bishop of Germany, is it? You stinking web of Lucifer. You beetle of the underworld. You antichrist. You will build me cathedrals? You will make me glorious? You are hanging yourself, Niemöller. A thousand priests lie dying in your jail. The blood of innocence is dripping from your teeth. But you will not hang me, and you know you will not. Or the sleeping wrath of the German Christians will wake and crush you like a bug. May I leave this building, or am I under arrest? Go. You may go. Let him go. The whole city knows he was arrested. They'll say he beat you down. He was sure he would be arrested. Give him a moment to think he's free. Arrest him on the doorstep of his house, Rudloff. Take him yourself. The Sachshausen and begin at once. You will draw out his spirit like a tooth. Remember, Rudloff, no physical violence. In six months, I want the living body of Martin Niemöller and in such good condition that it will stand erect under the robes of the Bishop of Germany. In six months, Rudloff, or it is your life. <laughs> Fast asleep? Yeah, he's sleeping all right. Had him carrying water all day. Open the door. Quietly. What have you got in that bag? Yeah. Open it over his chest. What's that moving in it? A rat. Drop it on him. <laughs> Get off. Get off. Would you sign this document, Herr Niemöller? Just sign your name. No. I told you no. But it only says that you agree with the government. No. No, he will not have me. He will never, never have me. Good night. Master! Master, you mongrels! Around in a circle! Around in a circle, march, march! Niemöller. Come here. Here. Put on this cap. Oh, it's a... It's a dunce cap. I can hardly... Put it on! There. Ah, look at him, you swine! Niemöller. Stand on one foot. 
<laughs> Ready, look pretty. Now hop to me. Come on, hop. <laughs> <laughs> you dance. <laughs> Ten. Hop to the wall. Lively now. <laughs> hey, stupid. Hop back to me. Now don't let the cap fall off. <laughs> now back to the wall. Come on, holy, holy. Back to me now. Faster, faster. I can't. I haven't the strength. Let me go. Oh, Herr Nimmola. I, I have here a paper for you to sign. Your name. Just your name and you will be free, rich and powerful. Here. Here is my pen. Go away. Just your name. It will only take a moment. A few strokes of the pen and this horror ends like a dream. Take the pen. Here. Hitler. Please go and tell Hitler. Yes, what? If he has left in him one spark of humanity, he must stop this. These men are turning into idiots. Last night, they made a priest break his crucifix and spit on, spit on it. And then they shot him. And I had to watch. They made me watch all the executions. Yes, I know. It is a horrible thing for you, Herr Traster. It's ridiculous for you to stay here. Take my advice. I am with you. Just sign this agreement to support the government, and I will have you out in ten minutes. I cannot sign it. Once and for all, the German people must know that it is possible for a human being to have faith enough to stand against him. If I sign, they will know resistance is not possible. I cannot sign. Go away. I will be back. Good day. You see? He don't sleep anymore. Sits there all night talking to that rat. Seems to have it trained. Yeah. Just sits there at his feet. Like a friend to him. Quiet. Let me hear what he says. We thought being Christian was building churches and throwing pennies to the poor, that it was justice they cried to us for. We turned our backs on the pain of the people and they spat upon us. And they were right. <laughs> oh, rat. Oh, ugly animal. Fitting congregation God has sent to hear my latter day wisdom. What do you see in your glistening eyes? A madman? Oh, have I lost the hour? Is the thread broken? Judge me, brother of our new German king. Come, bite my finger if I have slipped the edge of sanity. Come. How far has it gone? God, give me a sign. Oh, Lord, my God, lift up my heart. I am not iron. End it. Deliver me. He must not have me. He must not have me. Oh! oh. So sorry. The gun went off. <sighs> You're not hurt? No. Huh? What do you want? Go away, please. Don't ask me again. Don't. Don't ask me. Very well. I'll not ask you. Heinrich, bring in the box and that man. Hey, you. Come in here. Coffin? He's, he's carrying a coffin. Set the coffin on end. Upright. That's it. Now you step inside. Oh, I'm an old man. Shoot him. Don't make me. Get in there. That's it. Let him out, for God's sake. All right, Heinrich. That's tight enough. Turn it upside down now. He's strangled. You're sending him on his head. Now stop it. Don't touch that hair pasta. That's it. Sit down. The guard will watch you from the door. Uh, he has orders to shoot if you touch that coffin. Come, Heinrich. Wait. You can't leave him in here with me. I Come. can't help it, Niemöller. You will sign this paper or it is my life. You are carrying this too far. You are acting like a fanatic. Come, sign. Take the pen. No. No, no. All right. I will wait outside. He will shoot if you touch that coffin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Old men, old men, can you hear me? I would break the box. But God help me, I cannot die now. They will say it was suicide. The people will lose, lose all hope. They must have hope that a man can stand against him. Christ is stronger than it. Christ is stronger. Oh, the men in the box, die quickly, please. My soul yearns for that. But I dare not die now. 
For you, I live. To fight him, I live. In name of Christ, I live. I cannot break the box. For Christ's sake, I cannot. Again, his black blood fly out to devour the world. Oh, Lord, call out to the nations. Raise them up against this Antichrist. Strike down his squadrons and scatter him crosswise into the sea. Himala. Pastor. Eh? I am cursed in the next cell. It was plain, you hear them? A curse on them. No, no, no. They are from England and America. I just got a word. Listen. They're going toward Berlin. Toward Berlin? Yes. They are. They are coming over. Hey, Mala, sign it. I command you to sign this agreement. This very minute. I command you. Listen, Nazi. They are bombing Berlin. Oh, Lord. How long have I waited and how beautiful the sound of those angels. Hey, Mala, you will sign. I order you. Sign. Order? Come. Shout commands to the sky. Look through the bars, Nazi. They are coming. They are coming. Christ is not dead. The Boeing, the Stormovics, the White Spitfire. Come, you roaring eagles. Strike them from their cities. Look. You tremble, Nazi. You fear. Your skin grows cold. Don't turn away. Listen. Listen to the sound of those angels. Listen, Nazi. The world is born again. Thank you, Paul Lucas. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, Mr. Lucas will return to our microphone. Before we hear from him, we have a story of chemistry in today's world. In 1917, soldiers called their emergency rations, usually hardtack and bacon, iron rations. Maybe they weren't as hard on the teeth as iron, but it took real iron men to carry them because they were packed in an iron box, a big tin can about a foot long, and one can held one meal. It took a husky soldier to carry meals for a full day. In this war, a soldier can easily carry a full day's rations in his pocket. And thanks to general advances in food technology and to development work by technicians of the United States Army Quartermaster Corps, there has been a tremendous improvement in the quality and nutrition value of his emergency field rations. Emergency rations must be light. They can't be bulky, yet they must guarantee a man his daily quota of calories and vitamins. So packaging is important. Packaging that is light, strong, and protective. Packaging that can be counted on to safeguard emergency foods under the most trying conditions. The steamy jungle of Guadalcanal, the insects and torrential rains of New Guinea, the dry, quivering heat of the African desert. The United States Army Quartermaster Corps, working with the DuPont Company and other manufacturers, has developed improved packages for these emergency rations. Sometimes cellophane is used in the transparent sheet you're accustomed to seeing on many of the products you buy. Sometimes, for even greater strength and moisture protection, cellophane is combined with other products like craft paper, glassine, and foil. Most of these laminations, that is, cellophane combined with these other materials, were virtually unknown before the war, although you will see plenty of them when the war is won because they're doing such a good job. It's easy to understand why strength and resistance to all kinds of weather conditions are so important in packaging materials used on rations, Sometimes the rations must be thrown overboard from supply ships and floated to the troops on shore. In other instances, they're dropped by...